Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me this morning for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Friday the 5th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Book of Mormon. Laman and Lemuel, being the eldest, did murmur against their father, and they did murmur because they knew not the dealings of that God who had created them. 1 Nephi 2.12 it is easy to complain when we do not see the full picture. Like Laman and Lemuel, too many of us murmur and find fault when we lack the details or are unable to perceive the quiet and often mysterious workings of the Lord and his servants. God does not call upon us to act in blind obedience, for dynamic discipleship demonstrates intelligent obedience. Rather than judge situations that may seem to be out of line to us, we would do well to humble ourselves, seek divine guidance and perspective, and perhaps even converse with those charged to direct us. Okay. That goes along with um, the 28-day prayer study for today. But, anyways, today is... oh. No, I'll get into that later. Today is the third part of the Joseph Smith testimony. And this morning I got up and I read the explanation. I thought it was Saturday. Okay, I was hoping it was Saturday. But, um, so I'm running a little bit behind because I read the wrong thing. And then when I got here, I realized oh, I read the wrong thing. So then, anyways. It was very brief, very short. What happens is that the time came for him to, Joseph, to receive the plates, the Urim and Thummim, and the breastplate. And Moroni charges him to keep strict hold of them, strict charge. If you let them go carelessly, boy howdy, are you going to be in trouble. Um... And Joseph says from the moment he got them, extreme endeavors were made to get the plates from him. Persecution began like a hundredfold. Here's the thing. If people believe, actually believed that he had a gold Bible, okay, and they're trying to get it from him, they're trying to take it from him, how, how, I realize that Satan's power is quite evident here, but... If you believe he has a gold Bible, if you're trying to steal it from him, if you're trying to get it from him, then why don't you believe it's from God? Like, no matter what it is, if, if, like, isn't it extraordinary that there is a gold Bible and don't you want to know what it says? Instead of just trying to destroy, I, I realize that Satan's influence is very heavy at this point, but that's my thing. It was, so he gets them and his, he keeps them safe. It says, but by the wisdom of God, they remained safe in my hands until I accomplished by them what was required at my hands. And then um, it says for a more complete account, see Joseph Smith history and the Pearl of Great Price. So what I just read you is what I chose or what... I found that gave me hope in this reading today. Hope that by the wisdom of God, they remained safe. Um, it wasn't through Joseph's intelligence. It wasn't through um, the wonderful hiding place that he found. It wasn't through the, the friends and family who were helping him. It was through the wisdom of God. Um, and for me, I wrote... It wasn't through Joseph, but God. I can't do everything, but God can, and I need to rely on him more. So that's the hope I found for today. Um, um, okay, let's jump into our daily prayer devotion. Is that what I want to call it? I don't know. Um, today is the fifth. This one is by Ezra Taft Benson. 
Prayer has changed the world. Prayer is man's means of communicating with his heavenly Father, the almighty creator of heaven and earth. Only the deceived and the fool refuse to pray. An urgent need today is for more prayer, secret individual prayer, family prayer, prayer in organizations, associations, and meetings generally. And in schools and in government bodies, people of all nations need more prayer. We need to be on our knees. Prayer has literally changed the development of man. It has brought him out of the morass of indecision and discouragement into the sunlight born of faith through works and love and trust. Fervent prayer on the part of a young 14-year-old boy in New York State in 1820 started a chain of events which is literally changing the lives of millions of people today. The direct result of this prayer has been brought a positive understanding of the being of God the Father and his Son Jesus Christ. It has caused the uncovering of ancient histories which contain divine truths that if obeyed will lead directly to the eventual exaltation of man and to situ and to a situation of happiness and joy that words cannot describe. <laughs> So that leads directly into my um, my general conference study challenge. My names. Okay. Anyways, um, I confused some people yesterday when I talked about a general conference talk. Um, the general conference talk I did yesterday is for my general conference prep. Every Wednesday... I will be reading um, a talk from the last general conference, Only Apostles and President Nelson. Um, not all the talks, just apostles. And then for the Come Follow Me in the Book of Mormon, we'll be reading older general conference talks. Like um, for Sunday, I will be reading A Priceless Heritage of Hope from Irene from 1980. Six, but I think that date is wrong. I'm pretty sure that date is wrong. I don't know, even know if it's on there. Yeah, the date's not on there, but A Priceless Heritage of Hope. That's for that. I'm very sorry for the confusion. I will try to specify that every Wednesday before I get into it. Okay, now... It is day five of Lord Teach Me to Pray, and it goes right along with um, with basically everything we've talked about um, so far today. What did you see yesterday when you analyzed each of the Lord's index sentences? For the sake of continuity, let me share what I see. And There's her list. Topic, sentence, title. So there's her list. Although our titles may be worded differently, I think we can all agree the Lord's Prayer covers these basic and all-encompassing topics, and everything God's Word says on the subject of prayer could be aligned under one of these index sentences. To pray the Lord's Prayer intelligently is to cover every topic of prayer. Therefore, if you memorize this prayer, you will have in your possession the key to effective prayer that avails much. So, then she goes on, um, skipping around a bit. <clears throat> right now I want you to meditate upon our Father who art in heaven. Why do you think Jesus began here? Think about it and write out your answer before you proceed any further. Remember, these are to be days of learning. Learning by active participation. You will never reap more than you sow. So she wants us to be like, why is it important? That he began with our Father who art in heaven. And it goes along with the um, I can't words are anyways about who who our father is. Um, I wrote down a knowledge of Heavenly Father's true identity is key. If we don't know who he is, if we don't know where he came from, if we don't know his plan for us, if we don't have those fundamental truths of who he is in general, and who he is to us, 
what's the use of praying? Um, and that's kind of what she says, true prayers between father and child. And then <clears throat> um, she goes on, but honestly, I'm running out of time because I messed up this morning. But um, she says that she wants you to pray. Talk to him as father and child. Talk to him as a child coming to a father. And she goes, but Kay, you may say, my father never talked to me, never cared for me. So how can I talk to God as a father? Even though you may have had that kind of father, didn't you long for one who was loving, affectionate, caring, and accessible? Of course you did. Well, there he is in heaven waiting for you to talk to him. And here's the challenge part. Spill it all out aloud. Tell him what you think about him as a father. Tell him your fears, your hopes, your expectations. Tell him what you long for in a relationship. Then ask him what he longs for and listen carefully. Give him time to speak, then write down what comes to your mind. Nothing scared me more than that sentence last night. Ask him what he longs for. I sat there for a good three minutes going, okay, start your prayer any minute, Haley. Go ahead. It's time. Say your prayer. Go ahead. Ask him what he wants. Like, why was I so terrified to know his will, to know what he longs for? So as I said the prayer, I told him, I said, I'm terrified to ask this question, but I'm going to do it because she's asked me to. And I asked him what he longs for. And then I was like, okay, and now I'm going to listen. And I, I tried to not let my mind wander. I tried really hard, but it, it was really hard. And so I sat for a good two minutes before I ended the prayer. And then I ended the prayer and I went to bed and I, I didn't hear anything. No thoughts came to my mind. But honestly, I think just in the asking, it was, um, there was one time, one time where I remember I felt the Holy Ghost so strongly. I cried for like two hours. <laughs> so what, what the, what had happened was, um, my friend was, we were in the singles ward and she was going to talk to the branch president and ask for a blessing. She needed a blessing for something. I was like, you're going to get a blessing for like just will nil, just like growing up. It was before school started, we got a blessing or if we were really sick, we got a blessing and that was it. Um, um, and so it was like, it was reserved for important times or like really, really important things. And so it didn't seem that important that she get a blessing. She was just looking for some guidance or something. And I was like, you're just going to get a blessing for guidance. Like just go say a prayer or something. And as I was sitting in sacrament, me sacrament meeting, I was looking up at the branch presidency and I all of a sudden thought, well, what if I surrendered, not quite the word, what if I surrendered and asked for a blessing myself? And the minute I thought, uh, the minute I thought about letting my guard down and letting Heavenly Father help me in like the slightest bit, like the Holy Ghost overpowered me and I bawled for two hours being overwhelmed with the Spirit just to like open my heart a little bit to letting Heavenly Father help me in my day to day life. It was the weirdest, but like coolest at like, it was super weird. I was so overwhelmed with the spirit that I couldn't contain myself. So anyways, that's my little story about that. Um, so I don't know why it scares me so much to ask him a question about himself. Yes. I always ask him to like help me in my day and to be part of my day and to protect my loved ones. But I never ask him about him and what he wants. And if I'm going to communicate with him, if it's going to be more than a one-sided conversation, then that's something that needs to happen on a regular basis. Like if you have a friend or a sister 
who calls you daily, but all they do is talk about themselves. You're kind of like, Ugh, do I really want to answer the phone? They never ask me about how I'm doing. And then if they do, then they brush right over it and go back to talking about them. Is that the person you want to talk to? Is that the person Heavenly Father wants to talk to? No. Okay. Another thing from my general conference challenge calendar is that Friday is ministering days. It's a good thing I looked because I got to do that today. Um, I'll see what I can do. Okay. That's all for today. I got to get ready for work. That was the testimony of Joseph Smith, part three. And tomorrow we do the explanation of the Book of Mormon, which when I read it this morning, I thought, where am I going to find hope? It's just like factual data or whatever. But I found hope. All right. So we will see you tomorrow for that. Sorry for the confusion yesterday. Always text me, not text me, but email me, comment if you have questions, if you need anything. I'm available. All right. I love you all. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.